And now it's time to welcome my good friend and co-host, Jeff Small, president of Arbor Financial Services, a retirement income store located in Melbourne, Florida, and author of the Amazon best-selling book, Turning Financial Planning Right Side Up. Jeff is also our very own brand ambassador for the retirement income store. But we also want to bring in our first guest, economist Peter Morisi. Professor Emeritus at the Smith School of Business at the University of Maryland. He's also a former chief economist at the U.S. International Trade Commission. He's an author and a nationally syndicated columnist who frequently appears in the media. You can follow him on Twitter at pmorisi1. Peter, thanks so much for being such a good friend of the income generation and being back here with us. You're welcome. So uh, it looks like uh, quarantining is treating you well. Uh, you have a uh, new haircut, shorter hair than last time. And I've got to tell you, no bow tie. We're in the traditional necktie. Is that a quarantining change? Is that boredom? I mean, what's going on there? I think it's the first time I've seen you without the bow tie. Well, if you noticed, I also don't have glasses on. I had my cataracts fixed. And so this is my new softened image. You know, everybody that economists are kind of like, uh, you know, some, some medical specialties that poke you in places you don't like. So I'm trying to be the soft and cuddly economist now. Well, as long as, long as your opinions aren't, aren't cuddly, that's all we care about. We want to get the straight story. So tell me, you know, we, we, six months ago we were here, we were talking about what's going to happen economically in second quarter, third quarter. Um, and you were pretty optimistic. You were talking about a modified V recovery. But you know, tell us, are, are, are you even surprised to some degree the extent to which the economy has recovered thus far? Well, no, the bounce that we got in the third quarter, given the amount of money that was pumped in and the amount of, you know, in terms of the, the CARES Act and, and the amount of money that the Fed printed, which was huge, uh, is not surprising. What's disturbing to me is there hasn't been follow through that now that we see that the pandemic is lasting longer than we expected when we passed those laws, we're not getting a follow-up stimulus. So we really are in that K-shaped recovery and we really need a new, large, substantial and significant, well-aimed stimulus package to turn that K into a V. So, because an awful lot of people are getting left behind. By my estimate, we're gonna have about 5 million people who are structurally unemployed come February, people whose jobs have disappeared and. There's no hope of them ever coming back. So if we get that package, let's say February 1st, which is looking more and more like we might, is that too little too late? No, I think it's never too late, but I think that Mr. Biden is going to face a tougher economy than he should have to face. If uh, Nancy Pelosi and, and the president would put on their big boy and big girl pants, so to speak, and get the deal done. One of the problems is, is that with the Georgia elections still out there, you know, the runoffs, is they continue to posture as if they're in campaign mode. With, with, with Pelosi, you know, sticking to her guns that she wants $600 a week, you know, when that's more than people earned, uh, you know, in supplemental benefits. And, and, and McConnell um, on his side saying, oh, we got to be fiscally conservative and nothing over a trillion. Well, heck, we need, a half a, we need a half a trillion dollars just for the states to cover their revenue shortfalls, and then we need a lot of other stuff, yeah. too. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Jeff? Yeah, Dr. Marici, the economy has recovered much quicker than anybody anticipated. The unemployment rate's lower. Consumer demand is higher than we expected. Retail sales look robust for the fall. All the economists got it wrong, except you. You know, when we talked well, to I Nate, wouldn't go that far. Okay, I think there were a few <laughs> others out there. Okay, but well, certainly we were a minority. There, there were, but the majority of econ economists get it incorrect. Why is that? Why did they miss so much? You were, you, you were much more accurate than most of the folks that we talked to in the world of economics. So why did most of them get it wrong? Well, you got to remember, most of the people that you talk to are either macro forecasters, you know, people that do it for a living or, uh, you know, like they work at the Fed, or people that basically take their forecasts, read them and come in here and then talk about what they've read. And, you know, macro forecasters reduce the economy to a few equations, never really enough to reflect the reality around us. And they don't pick up changes in the structural environment. It's very similar to the problem right now that hedge funds are having and momentum funds are having. Their formulas and criteria are based on a world that doesn't exist anymore. 
Hey, 45 seconds, Peter. Uh, so how about the stock market? Are you surprised to the extent to which the stock market has recovered, creating several oh, new Oh, no. Highs? If you go back and read my emails, you'll see that I said we were going to just pop along. OK, yeah. I said we were going to have a, a summer rally. But, but uh, even new record highs feeling, like this? Well, I, I can't say that I called that, but there, we're not substantially above the old uh above the old record. So it, it was certainly within the realm of plausibility. Yeah. I've always maintained that the stock market come the second quarter of next year, Good. you know, by that time, we're going to have the vaccine building out in a dramatic way. We're that's, going to have a stimulus. That's right. That's right. And Peter, you know, we Peter, we take a quick commercial point, break. Uh, right after the break, we'll come back. We'll ask you about next year. I'm dying to hear what you have to say. You stay with us. We have more coming up in a moment right here on the Income Generation. We'll be right back. Now it's time to bring back in co-host Jeff Small, as well as our good friend, economist and author, Peter Morisi, which you can follow on Twitter at PMorisi1. So Peter, I had to cut you off for that commercial break there just a moment ago. Uh, okay, so you weren't that surprised uh, about you know, the market hitting record highs, because I know we talked back in May, and you even talked about PE ratios back in the mid, maybe even high 20s, as being okay in this low interest rate environment. So. What do you see in the stock market for next year, for 2021? Okay. Well, consider this. The, the average S&P over the last 25 years has been 26, and it has been drifting upward. Now, interest rates being so low indicate it could go up to 30, 35. Right now, we're at the upper band of that, upper end of that band at, at, at the current, at the current S&P. We're up around 35, 36. However, between now and the second quarter of next year, FactSet has got, you know, year over year earnings bouncing up by 40 some percent. If you do that, then the PE ratio at today's prices falls to like 22, 23. So with a target PE of 30, you've got a lot of room to grow. My feeling is the real problem is trying to discern where that growth is going to be. I mean, who'd have thought you know, two years ago that we'd have a year like this where the energy companies are down 40% and the technologies are up 40%, you know, 80% differential. Um, the real key, if you're a stock picker, and you know, I'm, a, I'm an advocate of just index investing, but if you want to have some fun gambling, I mean, what are the tour companies that are going to be best positioned to get old people to get on boats again? What are the hotel chains that are going to win the most confidence as people start getting back on airplanes? Those are interesting questions to ask. And also, you know, I got a kick out of it. As, as, soon, as, um, as, as soon as we got the first vaccine report, Zoom stock fell like 20% that day. Uh, is that really true? Or if people learn to Zoom more, it's the proportionality of the structural changes that we have now endured. How much will that continue? And then relating that to stocks, that's that's the key to succeeding going forward. Yeah, it's funny. I, our, our equity portfolio manager has said in his 30 plus years, he's never seen this level of whiplash between different parts of the stock market. Isn't that right, Jeff? Yeah, the whiplash has been crazy. I mean, I have to get a massage almost weekly now because of it in the markets as we get whipsawed back and forth and back and forth. But, you know, we're having this, this competition now amongst Moderna and Pfizer. First, Pfizer says 90% effective. Then Moderna says 94. And now Pfizer says, hey, we're 95% effective. So we can see who wants to be the king of the Here hill with the vaccines. we have 96. <laughs> Soon, 96 is coming. But it's great that we've got the vaccine on deck. The problem is, we got to be able to roll it out quickly. And if it's going to roll out the second half of next year and it's going to take through the third or fourth quarter to get it out to the American public, Dr. Marici, do you see more volatility potentially in that delay? Well, if we have that kind of delay, we're going to continue to have volatility. But I don't see necessarily having that kind of delay. Pfizer's talking about applying within days for authorization to go forward. Now, there are two shot vaccine, which is a pain. But I think that pain has been overestimated. I think people will stay put to get two shots rather than travel from New York to Florida to try and then try to get a second shot. Uh, the Moderna uh, vaccine's a one-shot deal. Uh, we ought to be able to build that out reasonably quickly. Uh, so I don't see it taking quite that long, but you know, we'll just have to live through it. 
Okay, well, I'm ready for my shot. <laughs> Give it to me now. <laughs> I want to get back to normal. I would like to be the guy with the needle. You know, I took the polio shots as a kid, and they, we had these square and reusable needles. You know, I'd like to be. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, I was thinking at 40, 50%, I was thinking I wouldn't bother getting a shot, but truly at 90, 95%, uh, you'd almost be crazy not to. Um, I think so. it, I think it's an uncivic thing. I think it's a selfish thing not to get the shot. Simply, uh, everyone should get it. I um, urge President Biden, when he's president or sooner, to, to take his shot on national TV to help build confidence. What I would really like to see is Mitch McConnell and 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 President elect Biden together in a photo session each taking the shot together and urging Americans in, com in unity uh, to line up for their dose. I really would like to see that. This is a civic duty. Yeah. Well, it's, it's so, you know, assuming you're right, we get, uh, you know, uh, by the second half of next year, things start to look better in terms of COVID spread and, and then the economy even more so. Uh, but, you know, the stock market and, and what our viewers and listeners want to focus on it's interesting. You said back in May that retirees, people near retirement, should probably look at more dividend-oriented stocks. And through most of summer, you know, those stocks were were out of favor. And and we called it early. You called it early. So I'm not picking on you for it for sure. Tech stocks were on a tear, but now it seems like that's turning. It seems like the mm -hmm. the dividend-oriented value stocks are now coming around. So, in the last minute we have right here in the segment, tell our viewers and listeners most important thing they should know in terms of their investment strategies if they're retired or near retirement? Well, I think now is the opportunity for balance and diversification. Um, my feeling is with the economy coming out, they can overweight a little bit to stocks versus fixed income because fixed income is problematic. And so, you know, we've had, we've had, we've had a, a whiplash. So I think now, you know, is a good time for indexing. Uh, I don't think it's going to be particularly easy for people to make those hard calls I described in the previous segment. Yeah, yeah, it's going to it's going to it's going to be a challenge for sure. Um, so, Peter, thanks so much. We appreciate you being back with us as usual. Always great words of wisdom. Um, and you stay with us. We have much more coming up right here on the Income Generation. I'm David Scranton here with Jeff Small, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 